This first Tech Challenge season has been full of many challenges and victories along the way. We've gone through setbacks and miscalculations, but I've also had success in designing our first custom drivetrain using advanced coding methods. And to top it all off, we've achieved the biggest success in our team's history. We are Roaring Robotics, and this is our Freight Frenzy story. I was interested in joining the team after taking a robotics class my freshman year. I was interested in joining the team because I enjoyed participating in FLL throughout middle school and I wanted to be a part of the community again. Since I had always been really interested in STEM and future careers, after taking that class, that, that interest inside me was just fueled and I wanted to learn more and get involved. I attended an FLL camp that the Roaring Robotics team put on and they invited me to join their team. The early season began with a lot of outreach, so actually in September we had several outreach events. We actually participated in two parades around that time, our homecoming parade and the local Andy Divine Days parade. We even participated in the Mojave County Fair having our own booth for the first time ever. Shortly after in October, we had our own trunk at a trunk or treat. We actually drove around some of our old robots and handed out candy using these robots. For one of our biggest outreach events of the season, we volunteered at the Kingman Cancer Care Unit's Arts and Crafts Fair to help raise money for cancer patients in our community. The Arts and Crafts Fair is an event that we as a robotics team help out with every year. It's basically a bunch of entrepreneurs from the Mojave County area that come together to sell their merchandise. A lot of it's usually decorations, um, stuff like that, so we help out by helping the people transport their merchandise to and from their vehicles because a lot of them are elderly so some of them need help carrying uh, heavier objects into and out of the area where they sell them. The design process for this robot began in March of last year. We started by trying to make our first custom drivetrain using a dead axle system and it was Awful. We're glad, I'm glad we never made that in person. The next generation of it started around July and August, which is the current generation we started using. We began developing the new dead axle wheel 3D printed parts and they worked out really well. After the season came out though, we knew that we had to modify it to be able to go over the warehouse pipes, so we did add the bumps into it and change the belt angles. We catted everything first, of course, and the CAD was mostly finished around November and we had manufactured parts being sent around and then we started actually doing renders and renders we do that in Blender all 3D model stuff and we've been trying to get really realistic this year we have been trying to get like all the cables, wires, screws, everything in the CAD models I think one of the most interesting parts was trying to like figure out how the robot thinks and then putting it all together at the competition and seeing how it really works. In August, we started teaching our newcomers on how to program. And in the start of January, when our robot was finally finished, we started building the basics of programming within our robot, starting from how to drive and doing the lift and the horizontal slides as well. Later on in late January to early February, we started more advanced techniques, starting from a motion planning library called Roadrunner, which allowed us to move across the entire field in auto using advanced movements. And we also invested heavily in our OpenCV technology as well. Programming has been a lot of fun so far, but sometimes it's hard to wrap my head around some of the concepts, but everyone's been super helpful and I'm interested in exploring it further. The hardest part about programming our robot this season was by far and away our auto selector because there are so many different variables put together. There are 72 different configurations for our robot, each of which giving a whole new variable into how the robot will move and how it connects with other branching paths as well. We have to pick from our side, from where we park, and specifically whether it's low, medium, or high level. Each of those variables are very hard to make consistent and work in tandem to one another. One of our biggest challenges during programming was during our Roadrunner calibration, we had a slight problem 
in calculating the rotation of our robot. In the programming, it requires to use radians rather than degree measures, so you have to do the math in order to convert degrees to radians. Unfortunately, our programmers did not realize this until three days before our competition. But the biggest thing that came up, though, was time constraints. We originally were going to have a competition on December 11th, but we ended up not being able to finish in time, and so we had to cancel that one. Because we missed the first competition, this was the only opportunity we had to get to state. My first competition was quite like a shock to me. It really changed my whole perspective on robotics in general. It made me want to work harder for my team and gave me the motivation to be there like every day. Moving up from FLL to FTC, there was also a different emphasis on cooperation since our team score per match was based on our performance in conjunction with another team through an alliance, whereas in FLL, our score was only based on ourselves with one cooperation mission. At the end of our turquoise qualifier, we weren't in the final alliance. During our award ceremony, we had won the control award, which is an award for the best programming. Four teams were going to make it to state, and that, those teams were the first place Inspire Award, the winning team alliance, and the second place Inspire Award. We had made it second place in the Inspire Award. It was a lot of fun and it completely changed my perspective on FIRST and robotics in general. After our first qualifier, we came back and we were hard at work for reprogramming the robot to make it more efficient and just to make the program better overall. The first Masters of State, um, we were doing actually pretty well and the Autonomous was working almost perfectly the first couple matches. We were heading out for lunch at State when two judges came to talk to us. The judges were really nice and every member got their moment to shine with them. Before they left, the judges asked us if there's anything else we wanted to tell them and one of our members said, Being a part of this team has given me a reason to go to school. I don't think I'd go to school if I didn't have this to look forward to. During one of our qualifying matches, we were paired up with the team Catholic Master Builders and at the start of our match, our auto had done something very unexpected. It had crashed into our Alliance hub and knocked it over. Despite that qualifying match, we had still made it to the elimination matches in our division, paired up with a fellow team, Carbo Knights. During the final rounds, we got some of the best matches in, and then eventually we were eliminated. After the last match, we went to our pits and packed up before the award ceremony began. We're going to the world, guys. They're not only a technical, but important enough for their community to invest in. Donning their custom two-tone team hooding, this team continues <laughs> to reward the power of the community through STEM to all they meet. Congratulations to your Arizona We will be representing Arizona alongside the Catholic Master Builders at the first championship in Houston next month. Since then, we've been fundraising for traveling through sponsorships and donations. We even had a fundraiser night at Culver's where we volunteered and showed off our last season's robot. If you want to support us, there will be a link in the description below alongside our state CAD, code, and portfolio. Winning the Inspire Award was a very 
exciting experience. It was definitely one of the most rewarding moments. It was the most surreal feeling ever. It was amazing. Ooh, yeah, baby. That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Ooh. I, I, we were all in shock. Shocking, to say the least. In my last three years of being a part of this team, I never thought in my wildest dreams that our team be able to go all the way to Houston, Texas and compete with the best of the best. And then being like, wait, they're talking about us. It was so cool to just uh, see all of our hard work that we had put into this season. Because we couldn't even believe it. I'm still in shock. I still can't believe we're even going to Worlds. 